So last time we were talking about multi-phase flow, specifically a black oil model for multi-phase flow, and considering the phases, oleic, gaseous, and water, we wrote mass balances for oil, water, and gas phases. Um, we couldn't solve those equations as they were written. We need some constitutive models to close the problem. And so we're going to use Darcy's law for multi-phase. So there's the three equations, which is Darcy's law for each of the phases. Of course, when you have multi-phase flow, then you have relative permeabilities. So you have your K is a regular permeability, and KRW is the relative permeability with respect to water, gas, and oil. And we have empirical relationships for those, like brooks corey remember? <laughs> yes, sorry. So if you plug those relationships into the equations we derived last time, There's a mass balance for water. balance for oil. The mass balance for gas looks a little different, but because we considered the fact that there could be dissolved gas in the oleic phase, So there's a mass balance for gas. So we have three equations. We've substituted the constituent models. How many unknowns do we have now? And 
just look at the equations. I mean, these are these are material properties. These are material properties. Material properties. Material properties. Inputs. Sort of unknowns. Saturation and pressure for each of the phases. So there's six, three pressures, three saturations, and we only have three equations. Can we solve that system of equations? No. So any other ideas? Do we have any more equations? <coughs> well, we, you know, we talked about we have this the volume fraction constraint or the saturation constraint. Right, so we could solve this for any one of those we want. Plug it in up there, and that, get rid, that gets rid of one unknown. <coughs> what else? Yeah. So remember capillary pressure curve. So you have capillary pressure curve. for the oil, water, and the oil, gas. Right. So that's two more equations. Now, most of the time, or a lot of the times, we can just assume these are zero, right? because especially on the scale of the reservoir, the capillary pressure is going to be small. And so we can, we can set these equal to zero and then use those equations. You know, basically, the pressure in the oil and the water will be the same. Right? Pressure in the oil and the gas will be the same, which means they're all the same. It's just one thing. Then if you substitute those back in, but even in the event that you didn't, if you want to use the actual capillary pressure curve, right, you could um, solve this equation in terms of water, solve this equation in terms of gas, plug them back into that one, and then you only have the only unknown in pressure is in terms of oil then, right? And then you could solve this for one of those, and then so you'd, you'd be solving the equations for the pressure in the oil. Uh, you'd actually, the, the best thing to do would be to eliminate the gas, saturation of the gas, because your pressure, your capillary pressure curves are functions of the saturation in the water and the oil. So if you solve this for SG and plug it in, then your three unknowns would be the pressure in the oil, saturation of the water, and saturation in the oil. Then you solve those equations. Are those linear equations? Linear in the unknowns. They're not. Remember your your uh, relative permeabilities are functions of saturation. So if you plug those back in there, then you have unknowns multiplying on it in each term. And so you don't, it's, it's not a linear system of equations. You can't solve a linear system, right? A linear system where you have a matrix times a vector of unknowns. You won't be able to, you won't be able to write an equation like that. So we'll talk a little bit later. Uh, we won't actually, you know, come up with a, a nonlinear solver, but we'll talk about a couple of different solution schemes uh, for solving nonlinear equations. I, mean, we won't, I won't ask you to write one. It, it's, it's, it can be difficult, but we'll talk about it at least. So there's your equations for the black oil model. Since they're nonlinear, I mean, we, the, the answer to the next question is sort of obvious. By the way, this is just 1D. You just derive this in 1D. So imagine what it would look like in 3D. But uh, can we solve that by hand? It's pretty difficult to solve any nonlinear PDE by hand. I mean, 
there might be some very, very special cases that you can, you can do it. As they exist right now, with the three phases and all the nonlinearities, capillary pressure and all that, it would be impossible to solve this by hand. But we can make some, you know, so that, that doesn't sit well with me. We talked a lot about verification in this class, right? Verifying your code. So if, if I have to code this up, how in the hell am I ever going to know that that's the right answer? I mean, in the absence of doing anything else, I could try to compare with experiment. That would be good. But I could just accidentally match the experiment for one reason or another. And then I'd feel good about things. Right? Uh, and then you go and change the input data for some reason, you get some completely different answer that wouldn't match the experiment. So I think you guys, what if, is there anything that you've, covered in any other classes that deal with multi-phase flow where we can get some type of analytic or semi-analytic solution. No, that won't help. What if I took away the gas phase and I just considered oil and water? <coughs> Buckley leverage. How many of you guys have Buckley Lake for Reg 1 or Reg 2? One of you? So you probably spent like half the course on Buckley Leverage, right? <laughs> really? Oh, uh, Mahanti. So, well, uh, I'm sure you covered it, right? But I mean, Dr. Lake is, uh, if, you, if you don't learn anything else in petroleum engineering, you learn Buckley Leverage. Anyway, uh, yeah, so if, I, if we reduce the three-phase equations to two-phase equations and just look at oil and water, in 1D, we can uh, compare to the buck buckley lever solution. Right? So that's going to be our verification problem. And since it might have been a while, you might be rusty, let's, let's uh, review the buckley lever theorem. 